Hi, I'm Commissioner Henry Mitchell III, District 1 Commissioner in Douglas County. Welcome to District Dialogue. And today, I got an awesome time frame to talk with two beautiful ladies that's going to talk about E911, all of what they do, how they do what they do. And let me just tell you this much. You'll be out celebrating all the holiday festivities. These guys will be at work doing the great services that we as Douglas County citizens would love to have and need. And when they make that call, when you dial 911. Douglas County 911, what's the address, your emergency? You wanna make sure somebody is there, correct? So with that being said, welcome again to District Dialogue. Sitting with me today, I'll let you guys do your introduction of who you are, your uh, titles and all that which you do and introduce yourself to the District Dialogue uh, family. Good afternoon. I am Katrina Harley. I am the E911 director for Douglas County. Now that was just modest. You just, you're just you're so humble. Modest. You're so, yeah. <laughs> what, what is it that, I mean, I got your title, we got your name, and kind of give me a little bit description of kind of how you do what you do when you do what you do here. My job as the director of Douglas County 911 is to make sure that your 911 services in Douglas County are running at optimal levels. It's mission critical work. And so uh, with that, um, my wonderful team, as I sit here with my deputy director, uh, make sure that all of our operators are taking care of your needs as the citizens of Douglas County and those that are also visiting the county. Hi, um, my name is Tina Donnell. I'm the Deputy Director of Douglas County 911. I've actually been with the county for 33 and a half years and have been with 911 for 32 of those. And here I work exclusively with payroll and the budget and I do scheduling and make sure that everybody on the floor is here and has what they need to get their job done and to take care of all the callers, the citizens, and everyone that comes through Douglas County. Let's talk about E911. Let's talk about all the duties and things that happens here. As I stated earlier, we all go home and enjoy the festivities, all the holidays and all that good stuff. What are you guys here doing? Well, we are here 24-7, 365 days a year. Uh, right now, we are gearing up for uh, Tropical Storm Depression Nicole. Uh, and so anytime there's any type of event or Christmas, holidays, birthdays, our folks are here. And oftentimes, um, you know, as, as sad as it may seem, folks that do this work are so committed to this work that they understand that those things, you know, may be missed with their families. And so what we try to do is we try to provide those things here. So as you saw my door walking in, there was birthday celebrations because I just had a birthday. And so we, we try to celebrate each other while we're here because we, we spend quite a, a bit of time here. The calls come in. Yes. And, and, and you don't know what the call's about. It could be from some trauma situation, somebody, you know, having a baby and you just name it and you guys trying to talk them through. Talk to me about that. How, how when the call comes, when somebody hit that 911, Talk to me kind of what's next and kind of what, what happens next. You were exactly right. We never know what the next call is going to bring. It could be as easy as what time does the parade start to the there's been a major incident on the interstate and the interstate shut down and we're going to need state patrol, fire department, EMS. We may land a helicopter. So we, we don't ever know. So honestly, that big adrenaline rush when the phone rings, so we get ready for whatever surprise is waiting on the other end. So how do you find that special person that can do this? I mean, this doesn't sound like, this is like a calling. This is not just something that people just off the street walk up there and start being an E911 operator. So it absolutely is a calling, Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, one of the things that we often talk about is in order to have a well-trained 911 operator. It takes us about a year and a half. Um, initially, they're trained to call take, so that's to process the initial calls from the citizens, but then on the other end of that involves dispatching to our first responders. And so, and that's, that's another special skill set. Um, you know, we talk about multitasking, and then you hear, you know, well, no one can truly multitask, but our folks uh, do multiple things, one right behind the other and they have to be uh, ready to be able to do that. The first, the very first skill set is to be able to talk and type. 
And that <laughs> yeah. is a unique skill set. You know, folks can talk, but and they can type, but to put those two together. And so that has to happen in tandem. But, but with the stress out of this, I, I just kind of see this very stressful. And maybe it's me, I, I may be wrong, but it seems very stressful. I gotta talk, I gotta type, and then I gotta hear what you're saying on the other end of that call. That, that to me becomes very interesting. Like, how, how do you find that right person that's, that, that's, that's a fit for them? I mean, and then I guess I like to ask, how's, what is the ratio, the turnover ratio? Is it high because it's so stressful? not able to multitask or is it you kind of find that right person and and you guys be here for 30 40 years it is high okay. um and because 911 uh presents a, a unique uh set of circumstances so we talked about being here uh 365 days a year 24 7 so you know we we always have folks here and so we have that that overnight shift and we work 12-hour shifts okay. uh in douglas county and then um, you have that, so there's that work-life balance piece because folks have families and things that they, that they want to get to. And then you touched on the vicarious trauma. So, you know, yes. folks sometimes come in with, you know, things going on personally, but then every day when they sit down to actually uh, receive those 911 calls, they don't know what's on the other end. And so they have to be prepared to receive that secondary trauma. And so um, with that, uh, when we're looking for uh, folks, one of the things that um, that deputy director does is she goes over the good, the bad, and the ugly. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll let her uh, speak to that. Uh, but then we also, um, we also send folks for psychological assessments uh, and we send them for polygraphs as well because they are certified by the state of Georgia uh, by the um, Peace Officer Standards Training Council as communications officers and so we do have to have that special someone that understands the nature of the work uh understands um the the climate of the work and the culture of the work okay let, let's talk about the good the bad and the ugly absolutely we found when we were bringing new employees in although we tell people that we work 24 hours a day seven days a week that the reality of it wasn't impacting them because we didn't express it in such a way that they really truly adopted it to their lives and how it would apply them to them. So they were leaving us after just two to three weeks because the reality of the schedule and that was really slowing us down if we're getting two to three weeks in and then they leave. Yeah, see, and, and I'm again, I'm, I'm on TV looking yeah. at the E911. Sure. The, 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 yeah. So I, on the other end of that call, it's got to be like, how do I type? remember and hear and try to tell somebody how to get this chicken bone out of the, you know, that's stuck in their throat or something, you know, and you're trying to tell them, and I'm assuming you guys go through all these techniques. Yes. We know, actually CPR. have, okay. yeah, training, and we're mm -hmm. nationally certified through uh, Priority Dispatch. It's an international corporation, and we do, they have an exact script that they follow. It's the exact script when it, you don't know what the other end of that call is, but there's, there's still steps that you still have to take in Correct. kind of getting there, I guess. Okay, That's I'm sorry. The, the nature of the call, of the medical call specifically. Okay. Okay. So it gets narrowed down to a chest pain or unconscious not breathing, fainting, diabetic, seizure, childbirth, trauma, stabbing, allergic so reaction so it's very that. specific <laughs> we don't have to remember it's in, it's in front of us it's okay. it's available to us through our computer aided dispatch system mm -hmm. wow. but so we do technology. have to know how mm -hmm. to do it yes technology is wonderful and we have a really available access here is amazing that just seems like a whole lot though. Well, it allows us to provide medical instruction yes, yes. you yes. know not advice right. instruction so Correct. you know if there's someone for instance that calls and they're unconscious and not breathing you know, our operators actually go through the steps of CPR. If someone is actively in labor and about to give birth, they actually go through the steps of delivering a baby. So you guys have a real true formula of kind of, if this call is about trauma, these are the steps you take. If yes. this call is about, you know, somebody having breathing problems, take Correct. these steps. And But all that stuff has to be trained, and that's why you said it takes a year, 12 months or so to a kind year, of get you about there? A year and a half, about a year and a half to, to have a fully 
trained operator. And so, you know, and that, that actually leads to what our staffing looks like because we may have uh, someone that's new and they may just be able to call take, but then you still have your law enforcement radios mm -hmm. that have to be dispatched. You have your fire EMS radios that have to be dispatched. So they have to then be able to, once they are proficient at processing a 911 call, they have to be able to move on to those other positions. How long have you been doing this, Ms. Harley? How I've been doing this, um, I started, my career started at Fulton County, okay. actually, and I was at Fulton for 15 years. And I am very new to Douglas. I, I just came on board uh, with Douglas County January of this year. Let's talk about uh, kind of how you guys funded. Let's talk about the funding, you know, as an enterprise. How you got? How are you guys funded so the general public can understand how that process works? Because I know on my bill, my phone bill, I pay an additional dollar and fifty cents or three dollars or whatever that number is. Talk about that. That money actually funds your nine one one, your e nine one one system. Uh, and that is that that funds our staffing, that that funds our ability to run as the county's what we call PSAP. And a PSAP, we use a lot of acronyms in 911. So a PSAP is a public safety answering point. So Douglas County E911 is the public safety answering point for Douglas County. So that means that anytime someone picks up the phone and they either dial 911 or text 911 that phone call comes to this 911 center. And how, how do you guys work with other counties, surrounding counties? Let's say there's a natural disaster close to the proximity of where you are. You guys kind of come together, or a natural disaster that's coming through, like a hurricane of some sort. How do you guys kind of come together trying to kind of pull resources together because this may be a statewide problem, but we've got the resources in Douglas County to kind of move that problem forward. So we absolutely work with our surrounding counties. We, we have very good relationships uh, with our colleagues to the west with uh, Carroll County and uh, Atlanta and in the metro area, Fulton County, uh, Paulding, Cobb, um, because we, we absolutely do uh, have to work with each other. Like say for instance, if something happens on the I-20 corridor, Correct. well we know that you know if you go just a little further east, that you'll be in Cobb County That's correct. and then you'll hit Fulton That's County. Yes. And so, um, you know, we have the technology that allows us to be able to one button transfer a caller to those other jurisdictions uh, if, if they are out of Douglas County and they need that assistance in another county. And so um, also with our county, we also have the, uh, the ability to become interoperable with our radio system. Um, so that our first responders can also speak to those other jurisdictions as well. And, and the good part is we've actually, with the $15 million spend on our radio system that we just encountered through a SPLOS referendum, uh, the, the, the current SPLOS referendum, talk about how that benefited E911. Oh gosh, it's, it's just great for the entire county. Yes. And it, yeah. it, it benefited all of public safety. Um, I think that there's a misnomer. So, right, uh, when, we, when we talked about 9-11, one of the major problems was that there was no interoperability. So you had folks that really couldn't talk to each other. Right. And that was, islands, yes. right. Mm -hmm. And so that was, that was also an issue that, that we had, or you had responders that would go into certain buildings and they couldn't talk on their radios. They Correct. could not communicate. Correct. And so with our new radio system, it allows our public safety responders to be able to talk to each other. And that is critical in these mission critical situations where you have multiple agencies, lots of units that are responding. It's critical for them to be able to communicate and talk to each other. And it's also critical for our dispatchers on our end to be right. able to hear and to communicate and to be able to bridge that gap. 911, we like to kind of consider ourselves like as air traffic controllers, right? So we are kind of facilitating all of these units that are, that are uh, out at calls and things. And, and so it's important for us to be able to do that. And having a radio system where we can all communicate allows us to be able to do just that. You're proud that we actually, uh, Douglas County, kind of connected with Cobb County, who's got what I call an awesome system yes, yes. that we connected with. And now we, we're part of the bigger system by just connecting with Cobb and doing what we're doing now. Yes, that's very, it's very important for our county. 
and and I'm 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 certain that our that our first responders yes. would would all would would <laughs> very much agree uh, that you know it just it just makes them feel better to be able to if they if something happens for them to be able to radio out and get the help that they need. With that that funding source that where we pay an additional two or three dollars whatever that is on your bill, um, is that working? Is that enough? for what we need in Douglas County, yet along kind of what, is that enough to keep this E911 where it is? Or, cause I know with the, with the radio system, the $15 million we just put on the radio system. Now, is there any other needs that's there that you foresee and forecast in the future that we need to be prepared for and get ready for? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Uh, you, you know, as you well know, our county is poised for tremendous growth. And so that means that in our actual operations center, we will need to build out that center completely. You know, right now we still have positions that are open. And so we'll need to fill those positions because when you go back to just speaking of, it takes one and a half years to train, to fully train an operator, mm -hmm. right? So as the county grows, we need to be ahead of that. We need, because we need to be, we need to have enough staff in place to be ahead of what's coming. Our center last year fielded 244,000 calls and we're on track this year to, to field even more than that. And Deputy Director has been here for a long, long time and she can speak to what the population was like when, when she first came on board. Yeah, when, when I first came on board, the population was right around 77,000. Okay. The interstate had different numbering system. Uh, there was not access to return on Chapel Hill Road. You mm -hmm. could, if you got off at Chapel Hill, you could not get back on. And surprisingly, I just realized this as we were talking earlier today, that our population in the county has doubled in yes. size. We're right at 144,000, if I remember correctly. Yes, that sounds about right. Our staffing level in our center has remained constant. Uh, so unfortunately, we have not kept up with the times. And so we've really been pushing, that's one of our goals for this year that we've been pushing so hard towards. Let, let's talk about the positions that you guys have available. Talk about, I mean, right now we're on District Dialogue, our District Dialogue family. Let them know kind of how they can apply, what are the requirements. The initiatives that, that I brought on board uh, when I first came on board was the evolution. Mm -hmm. And so um, one of the things that I, that I realized just in assessing our 911 center was that we needed to evolve to meet the needs of not where we are now, but where we're headed. Correct. Because we are, we, we, we yeah. yes, yes, that, that kind of big picture thinking. Uh -huh. I was very blessed to come into a situation where I have a team of people around me who are super supportive of what we're trying to do. So we yes. set, we set what, uh, what I call a wig, a wildly important goal. Okay. Okay. And so our wildly important goal, and I, I got that from actually a leadership book, okay. Um, we set a wildly important goal, and that was to increase our staffing by 50% of the vacancies that we currently have. And I'm very happy to sit here and say to you today that as of November 28th, we would have exceeded that goal, and uh, we have, uh, we'll have, as of today, three open positions for our 911 center. We actually just had interviews today. Um, but uh, that being said, we also need to assess where we need to go. That's and great. so we will most definitely need to fund, fund and fill more positions. So mm -hmm. when we talk about that enterprise funding, mm -hmm. will it be enough? So right now, as we exist today, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's sufficient. Mm -hmm. But as we grow and as we need to grow in order to be able to accommodate the needs of this county, Correct. Correct it probably won't be. What are the positions and kind of how, how could those that are watching uh, District Dialogue today, how can they apply? Where do they go to apply? We uh, take applications through the county's website through HR. So it's CelebrateDouglasCounty.com mm -hmm. and it will have uh, open positions. We try to advertise just once a month mm -hmm. and uh, keep it open for about a week because the process is a little involved for us and that way we don't get overwhelmed and behind. And um, you only have to be 18, a high school diploma, or a GED. Mm -hmm. 
and th and be able to type 35 words per minute or more. And no felony convictions. No felony convictions. It seems pretty cut and dry. If you kind of check these boxes, you, you have a shot at it though. And right now you're, you're kind of in the f um, field position or you trying to load up the bench so you can kind of get ready for those that are kind of moving up or out. That is the hope. So the great thing about our 911 center is that we have a lot of um, a lot of seniority mm -hmm. in our 911 center, and that's an excellent thing to have. Mm -hmm. However, folks will be retiring, okay. you know, and, and we are as we, what we have like two, three years out yeah. uh, with, with many of our employees um, that, are, that are currently here, Got you it. know, and they, a lot of our employees, they love the work so much mm -hmm. that, they, that they opt to come back part time. Yes. Um, and so, um, but with our 911 center, it's very unique in that way that we have a lot of seniority in our 911 center. I guess I thought the opposite because of the stress and the demand. Well, know. that might be the future, though. Okay. Right. Okay. The the future might we might might be two to five years, and that's kind right. of the wow. the industry tr uh, trend. trend. So right it now, is. you know, we we are we are exceeding the industry trend, but what does that look like three years from now? And what do you envision then, the future of E911? I know you spoke about some of this earlier. Kind of what does that look like? I mean, five years, 10 years from now. I mean, I'm assuming you'll be here with us. Ms. Harley, we're not gonna let you run off and leave us. But what, <laughs> what, does, that, what does that look like five, 10, 20 years down the road for E911? It means that we have to be, we have to be on the forefront of things. Mm -hmm. We have to we have to ensure that we are that we're keeping up with industry trends that we're we're looking technology. to the future the technology yes. Yes. the growth yes. of the county um, you know and and one thing that's important is that we can't have technology for technology's sake right. we have to have the type of technology that our employees uh, are actively using mm -hmm. that is best for the county and so right. we have to be ahead of those things so we gotta we gotta look different. In different areas, and yes. and we also have to have to make this known as a public safety entry point because a lot of people don't even know beyond TV mm -hmm. about <laughs> 911 as a career in public safety, and so because we're 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 the voice behind, yes. and so we like to say we're the first first responder because when folks need those responders they pick up that phone and they dial 911. And so that's most important is to yes. allow folks to understand how critical we are. And we want and we want somebody on the other end of that call though. When yes. you hit 911, I don't want, want to say to hold right, we don't we don't want to go there. No. And, and to circle back to being, you know, that entry point for public safety, we really do want those high school graduates just mm -hmm. out of high school that want to be a police officer one day, that want okay. to do other things because mm -hmm. as a police officer specifically, you can't do that till you're 21. So come here, give us three years. Mm -hmm. We will introduce you to police officers. We will help you get certifications that will help you in the application process Yes. to get on Absolutely. at 21 in to the next phase of their career. I had uh, a dear friend that was an E911 operator and she talked about the stress side of it. She talked about, but she did it for 30, 35 years and retired. I mean, so I think there's a likability to it, but then I can see the other side of, man, this is demanding, you know, cause again, I know when I hit 911, I don't want somebody saying, hold on, or I'll be get right back with you or press one to go and get here. like. No, I need something to happen then. Right. And I think most expect that though, correct? Absolutely. That is the expectation, yes. yes. Talk to, okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna wrap this all up though. So, so are there anything else that's, that's around or that we need to talk about to, to, that we want to express to the general public and to the, the district dialogue family? Like, what, what are we missing? Is there anything missing that you would like to share with the district dialogue family? So, um, the the one thing that we would like to share is we we do uh field a lot of calls that aren't emergencies mm -hmm. uh that are for other things and so it's important for uh the community to understand that 911 is for emergency calls mm -hmm. so it's for if someone is having a heart attack we don't want to be fielding a call uh with someone asking for direction somewhere mm -hmm. 
you know, because we don't have uh, an infinite number of operators working at one time. And so what happens when, when, when folks call for those non-emergency calls, they actually tie up the 911 line. And so it's important that, that, we, that we receive those emergency calls and that we keep that line clear uh, for emergencies. So make sure the call is, a, is an emergency call, not my cat is up the tree and come help him get down. Yes. And, and you know, it's also important that if there is, um, if there is a, a large accident, um, you know, and if you are a first party caller passerby, you can provide more information mm -hmm. by calling 911, you know, than someone that may be on the opposite end of the expressway calling uh, because they see something. So if you, if you know that you can provide that information, that's important for the first responders as well. When you do need to call 911, stay on the phone with us. Okay. We are going to ask for your name, your phone number, and that's just because we're verifying the information that's yes. showing on our screen. Mm -hmm. And if we lose the call, we want to be able to call you back. But I, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, even if the call drops or if I hang up or whatever the case may be, you guys are able to, y'all got this system in play where you can kind of hit redial. I'm calling it redial, but y'all may call it something else that you can call us back anyway. So even if the call drop or even if, if I disconnect, you'll reconnect. Am I correct or is that incorrect? Most of the time that works, okay. but okay. in correct. the event that it does not, it's right. still very important to, to provide that phone number so that if that call drops, we can call back. And sometimes you may have instances where somebody is actually calling for somebody. Mm -hmm. So that's important as well. It's also important that if you're dialing from a cell phone to know that yes. we don't have your exact location. We have the location of the nearest cell tower. And so when we're asking for a location, you know, it's important to be able to provide us that. Now we have technology. Uh, we have a, um, a system where we can actually uh, send out um, a locator and, and the caller can accept it and so it kind of drops breadcrumbs but that's only for cell phones. Oh, wow. um, mm -hmm. So we, we, we do have a lot of technology that, that helps us in order to, to locate folks but it's still, it's still best. Nothing, mm -hmm. nothing beats hearing that information that's from right. a caller. Closing. I know we talked about E911 operators and you guys are 365, 24 seven, that's just kind of how you guys operate. Mm -hmm. It's never any downtime. You're about, probably like the uh, Waffle House. You're always open, always <laughs> open for business. Open. So what are the plans as we wrap up for the holidays? During the holidays, November, December, traffic is crazy as anybody that has ever driven on Highway 5 or Chapel Hill Road knows. Mm -hmm. Anything near any shopping center is crazy. So we have a lot more traffic incidents. As far as the actual holiday and uh, call volumes, we never can tell. We'll think it's going to be amazing, it's going to be very calm, calm, and it will just blow us up. So we never say we, it's quiet in here. Yeah, we don't use we the Q We never say that. We <laughs> never <laughs> say that. No, we never say it's quiet no, in here. We don't. It's That'll just jinx as soon it. as you say that. Mm -hmm. Just as soon as you say Absolutely. that. Absolutely. But we don't, we don't downsize. What we do is we are like a family here, so we know that there are people that Whatever your shift to work is, that's your shift. Mm -hmm. You know, if it falls on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, your birthday, your anniversary, that's your shift. Specifically the holidays, everyone will be here. However, we do try to, hey, you know, when's your family getting together? We try to work it out. Oh, you need two or three hours here? Okay. I'll come in and do that. Will you hang over a few hours for me? We're going to do mine in the mm -hmm. evening. So we try to help each other out as much as we can to accommodate. But the reality is there's, no, there's not ever an opportunity on those days to work with a smaller crew, but we just accommodate and try to help each other out to have those you few. Just don't know right. It's like if I could come in two hours late, you know, we'll do our event early mm -hmm. and then I'll stay over two hours for you since you're staying for me and we just you try to work it through. we get creative. You get creative you do yeah
Wow. Any other closing remarks on your end before we wrap this district dialogue moment up? I think that it's just it's an it's an honor and it's a privilege to serve Douglas County as the 911 director, and I'm I'm very grateful and thankful for the opportunity. Um, it one of the things um, that I thought about coming in here was how do how do we do this better? How do we do this differently? And so I just think that with that, you just always have to stay. Uh, in the forefront of, of, of what's coming and be able to provide that relief. I truly appreciate this. I really appreciate just this knowledge, this wealth of knowledge about what you guys do and how, how well you do it. And then that you guys are doing it 365 days a year, 24 seven is, is like a nonstop operation. And, I'm, and, I, and I think the citizens of Douglas County is proud to have you guys to, to keep up this type of a service. And so thank you guys for a job well done and truly, truly, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank just, you. I, with that being said, this has been a great E911. It wasn't a call, it was just a conversation. So thank you to my guest. Uh, thank you to the District Dialogue family for what you do and you enjoy your holidays as these guys sit here and make sure that Douglas Countyans are safe. Thank you and this is Commissioner Henry Mitchell. Enjoy the rest of your day.